Betting with the Barbers, powered by Superbook Sports, is back, and I know you missed us. Ron Kruk with former New York Giant Tiki Barber and former Tampa Bay Buck Rondé Barber. Guys, let's get right to it. Another crazy week in the NFL is in the books, and let's quickly look back at the good, the bad, and the ugly from week number 10. I, I threw some factoids together to kick us off this week. And because I'm always Mr. Brightside, let's start off with the good. Uh, <laughs> the Chiefs, Cowboys, Bills all seem to get back on track this week, guys. While the Titans, without Derrick Henry, won their sixth straight. And don't look now, but the Patriots are on fire. They have won four in a row. Any thoughts on the good from last week? Yeah, I think the Patriots are finding their their stride because Mac Jones is doing the simple things right. Right, sixteen of his twenty three attempts last week were at or five yards or less to the line of scrimmage. He pushed the ball downfield maybe six times. A couple of those were complete. Wanted a touchdown to Kendrick Bourne, but other than that, he's just not making mistakes. And in the NFL, when you have a good defense like the Patriots do, as long as you don't beat yourself, you're going to win football games. They've won four in a row, and the fifth one uh, five weeks ago. They played the Dallas Cowboys and lost in an overtime game, as we all remember. So they've been they've been hot against some of the good teams and some of the bad ones. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. The good Cam Newton back in Carolina. Yeah, that's a great story. Oh, nice, nice. That's a good story. That's a great and they story. win and they push themselves into the uh, if the season ended today <laughs> category. They're in the playoffs. So to nice. me, that is the best thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Also, it, Chris McCaffrey is back. That well, makes a lot of difference. Go. And then go. maybe suddenly the Panthers are back. I don't know. Yeah, that was a great story. All right. Now we have to look at the bad. More top teams, guys. Big favorites go down, including the Ravens, Rams, Cardinals, and Bucks, all losing outright. Your reaction? Well, I mean, it, oh God, the Bucks Bucks can't win a game they're supposed to win against oh. the quarterback that we kind of been discounting all year that was embarrassing uh, that's not even bad that's 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 not even ugly it's it's in a wholly different category we need a new movie you can't even have a clint eastwood movie for this one you got to create another movie and put a, a, a fourth subcategory underneath no, the Fox last week. yeah and the rams were bad too not because i mean look they they are a good team we know that they have good talent on both offense and defense the old beckham jr uh, uh signing is acquisition is something i think will ultimately benefit them but that interception that that stafford threw it was a second down punt basically it just set the tone for an ugly day for them i think they'll rebound uh but to me if you want to skip ahead to the ugly the ugly was the baltimore ravens on thursday night that was my Ooh. game week last week and they had no business losing that game except if you can't adjust to all mugs at the line of scrimmage on every third down third and long every single situation uh, and, and there were like 14 of them they so did the true. exact same thing they put seven guys at the line of scrimmage four uh man coverage guys deep six yards off the line of scrimmage and lamar jackson didn't have an answer and uh, uh, greg roman the offensive coordinator didn't have an answer that's why they lost that game in ugly ugly fashion yeah well, I, got, I, got, I, I can up to you i can i have one bad and ugly in one game what's that and we all watched it the uh seattle packers oh, God, all, that's terrible true. game so both both bad Packers won 17 nothing. That was bad. And the ugly is the Seattle Seahawks. Yes. Oh man. They are they are all of a sudden a disaster and a team a that everybody expected to compete. And they are yeah. a disaster, right? They put now. up a donut, dude. A donut. <laughs> and guys, I mean, we haven't even mentioned, I mean, there was so much. How about our first tie of the year? Pittsburgh Ugh. and Detroit. I mean, that was brutal. But my personal favorite, come on. Teddy Bridgewater's tackle <laughs> attempt. I mean, thank you, Steve Young, for putting him in. Uh, come on, man, on Monday Night Football. That was unbelievable to me. I mean, uh, that hit me hard. But we had our first tie, and that Pittsburgh-Detroit game might have set the NFL back a decade. I'm not sure. <laughs> a decade? More like four decades. Dude, that was ugly. <laughs> that was one of those. I cannot unsee that. <laughs> uh, nope. You're right. Exactly. Well, all right, we got to stay positive. And, you know, on that that note, you know, the Lions didn't lose last week. So, you know, it, all you fans who took that bet that the Lions would not go 0-17, well, you cash those tickets, people. Well <laughs> yeah. done. 
All right, let's roll into uh, our first game of the week, guys. Uh, we begin our look at week number 11 with the Monday night game. Why in the wide world of sports would we do that? Well, because it's a battle between the Barber Brothers' former teams. Tiki's 3-6 and six, New York Giants and Rondé's 6-3 and three, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Major bragging rights on the line in this one. This is going to be a lot of fun. A uh, few factoids. The Bucks have lost two straight. Uh, their head coach said we, quote, are a very dumb football team after they <laughs> lost to Washington. Unbelievable. But the Bucks have covered their last three home games, guys. The Giants are coming off their bye week. And before that, got a big win over the Raiders at home. Uh, they enter into this game five and four against the spread this year. Uh, Superbook.com, our odds. This game opened up, fellas, at uh, Tampa Bay minus 11. And they are currently still minus 11. The over-under 50.5 to open, and it's been bet down to 49 and a half points. Should be fun. All right, Tiki, let's break down this matchup. You're up first. Let's call a TV timeout for just a second because there's a watch party happening on Monday night, a watch party at Wicked Wolf Tavern at 120 uh, Frank Sinatra dot Drive in Hoboken, New Jersey. I will be there hanging out, having some beverages and some appetizers. Come on by down to the Heck Wicked yeah. Wolf Tavern, 120 Sinatra Drive in Hoboken, New Jersey. Rondé, unfortunately, will not be in attendance because he will be actually attending the Tim Bay Buccaneers game. That was spoken like a true radio person. <laughs> that, was that was a beautiful a segue. You know I, mean, I, why, I, I don't even need to host this. <laughs> All right, let's get to the game. So how do I see this one? I mean, it's a lot of points. And the New York Giants have done a couple of things really well in a few games. They've kept things close and almost winnable at the end. And given how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, how can I not take my take – the? Well, I was going to say the home team, but I'll say the good guys, the away team, uh, getting 11 points. So give me the Giants plus 11 in this game. And there's a couple of reasons why. I think Daniel Jones has played well all season long. And if he gets Saquon Barkley back – which felt like that was a month and a half ago that he hurt his ankle against the Dallas Cowboys. He's finally started to practice. He will be available. They're starting to get somewhat healthy on the offensive side of the ball. Hopefully Sterling Shepard comes back with his quad injury. Uh, so I trust offensively that the Giants can do what's necessary. But the most important thing is the Giants have started to play really well defensively. Patrick Graham, their defensive yeah. coordinator, has simplified their defensive scheme. So these guys aren't back there thinking. Like early, early in the season, you'd see them like lost and confused. Wait, what, what am I in? We just shifted. Like, what, what's what's happening here? Uh, now they just play basic, and they are able to react and use their athleticism. We saw it last week with Xavier McKinney at two interceptions just by being Johnny on the spot. So I like the Giants uh, getting 11 points, even though it is on the road. It's going to be nice down there. We're not used to nice weather because it's getting chilly <laughs> this way. Well, you look chilly in your little – Cute little vest. You hey, got on. Better to be overdressed and, than under. And the tie. I didn't get the memo, Tiki. Man, <laughs> I'm on the what I'm doing when I get off this call. Golf. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. But I do have a culture. Uh, it's hard for me to go against 11 points. 11 points, man. After watching the most frustrating game of the year uh, from the Bucks, in my opinion, they're all, they're on a two game losing streak. And t it t you know, 11 points seems like a lot. But this Bucks D is so suspect. Yes. They lost that game to the Washington football team because they gave up a 10-minute drive in the fourth quarter. That was to crazy. Taylor Heineke, it's ridiculous. They ran the ball 34 times in that game. They didn't have a lot of yards, but they were able to control the clock, and it was frustrating. So it's not necessarily a yardage thing for the Bucks defense because you look at their stats or whatever, and they're you know statistically a pretty de decent defense. They just make no plays, like none whatsoever. And like Tiki said, this is a very dangerous giant receiving room. You know, are they going to be healthy? Are they going to play? That is the question. So Tom Brady, you always feel like he's going to give you a chance to, you know, put points up on the board. He was not his MVP self last last uh, last week. It was actually kind of bad. You can tell specifically with this offense, they miss Antonio Bryant. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wouldn't have said that. You know, middle of last year, the middle of this year, it is clear that Evans and Godwin are damn good players, but they need a, thir a third amigo. And if they don't have it, 
I, I have a hard time seeing this. Daniel Jones is having a great year. I think we've all kind of said he is the guy that they're leaning on. Right. I just need their skilled players, you know, Tony, Galladay, if he's ever, you know, going to produce, mm-hmm. Sterling to not be injured, uh, Darius Slate, those guys. If they're able to play, this is easy for, for the Giants to cover. But, look, Bruce Arians likes to throw down a gauntlet, and I feel like he threw down a gauntlet this week. At some point in this year, this team has to show that they're a Super Bowl champion football team. So I think they're going to check their egos or whatever's holding them back at the door this week. And, and if they play the way they're supposed to, this is a double-digit win for the Bucks. I'm taking the 11. And it's a night where John Lynch gets his Hall of Fame ring. So <laughs> how cool is that? Well, in shocking news, Tiki goes with the Giants <laughs> and Rondé goes with the Buccaneers. What? No way. Well, let, let me break the tie. I've been going back and forth with this one, guys. I mean, Tampa Bay, three and six against the spread this season, but they've had some major point spreads to cover. So I'm so tempted to do what every sports book in the world wants me to do. Take that big favorite again. Uh, but I think it's what you said, Rondi. I think the Bucks defense is struggling, and I think that the Giants offense is, is doing enough to keep this one close. So I'm joining uh, Tiki on this one. I'm gonna say they're going to they're gonna cover that 11. Um, do I feel great about it? No, but um, <laughs> but I'm gonna take the 11. That's a lot of points. And remember. If you are in the New York or New Jersey area, go hang out with the Giants all-time rushing and reception leader and three-time pro bowler Tiki Barber. He'll be down at the uh, Wicked Wolf Tavern that's in Hoboken, 120 Frank Sinatra Drive uh, from 7 to 11. Anita Marks will be joining him down there. Make sure that you uh, follow us on social media at Superbook Sports for all the details. That's this Monday. All right, have fun, Tiki. Game number two, let's get it rolling. Maybe the game of the week, guys. Uh, An NFC-AFC battle between two divisional leaders as the 7-2 and Dallas Cowboys travel to Kansas City to take on the 6-4 and and suddenly (laughs) AFC West leading Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes looked like the quarterback uh, we used to know last week, throwing for 405 yards and five touchdowns. And that was just the fifth time, fellas, that uh, in 21 games that the Chiefs uh, covered the spread. So we go in, Mm. they're 0-5 against the spread at home this season. Will they break that losing streak? On the flip side, Dallas bounced back in a big way after their upset loss to Denver, blew out the Falcons. They are a very impressive eight and one against the spread only behind the Packers this season who are nine and one against the spread superbook.com odds. This opened up guys as a pick them and the money has been pouring in on Kansas city in this one. They are now up to minus two and a half point favorites. The over under opened at 54 and a half. It's up to 56 right now. Uh, this should be a fun one. Rondé, you get the honors. So without a doubt, this is going to be a football game, not the betting, but a football game that whoever has the ball last <laughs> probably is going to win. That's this is that point. kind of game. So whatever the over ends up being, it's 56 now, you have to consider taking it. I mean, it's rightfully probably the most popular bet of the weekend based on how these two teams play offense. But Everything about this game says shootout. Um, I know the Chiefs D is suspect, but so too is Dallas's defense, right? They, I know they've both been playing better, but they're still not what you would say good enough to stop the caliber of offenses that we're going to see uh, in this in this in this game. So clearly, Dallas is the class of the NFC right now, right? They certainly have the most control over the division. There's some strength in what they've been able to do, especially on the road. They got wins at Chargers. They got wins at New England. They got wins at Minnesota. Those are all solid road shows, right? Mm -hmm. But I just have a feeling, just this feeling, after watching Casey last week, that that they're back. You know, the the switch has been flipped. And I, I guarantee that Tiki will agree with me on this. Coaching is not overrated. Andy Reid is a heck of a coach. And he was going to eventually find a way to get them to start playing the way that this team can win. Patient on offense. First time I've seen uh, 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 Patrick Mahomes be patient on offense. He had most fantasy points yeah. of the year last week. 
throwing check downs and, you know, doing the small things to win football games. They're likely to get uh, Edward Solaire back, which will help immense, immensely. So personnel wise, I think this is a, a, a chief team that, that matches up better uh, uh, against this Dallas team. But however, you just said it. Chiefs don't cover. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Dallas only covers. They're daring you to believe this is going to be a field goal game. So true. <laughs> I'm, and I'm going to take it. I, if, if it was me, I'm taking it. It's, it's going to be 27 to 27. And this, this, this thing lying at two and a half, it's going to be a field goal with clock running off the, you know, the time run off the clock. Three point win. He's going to tear people going to tear up tickets and everything. So, so wait, you're taking the chiefs. I'm taking the chiefs two and a half. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, it's hard to in. disagree with anything Rondé just said, especially the improvements of Pat Mahomes. As crazy as that sounds, he won an MVP and a Super Bowl MVP. And we're talking about, he's got to improve. He does got to improve by not doing stupid things. Like <laughs> I'm a hero. I can scramble around and throw balls 40 yards downfield at the double coverage. And my guy's going to come up with it. And most, for the most part, because they lead the league in, in, in turnovers, they haven't done that. And yeah. last week was a get-right game. Five touchdowns, 405 yards. Pat Mahomes was the man. But guess what? He was still doing that stupid stuff. He got away <laughs> with one to Daryl Williams when he scrambled to his right, oh, turned yeah. across his body, threw it all the way back to the left end zone. The ball was 10 yards short from where it needed to be. But Daryl Williams went up and made a hell of a grab away from the defender who was just waiting for it. And Pat Mahomes got his one of his five touchdowns to improve his stat line and his fantasy points for our me and Rondé's fantasy football team. Oh, there so, you go. I love Pat Mahomes. I love that he's improving, but the Dallas Cowboys are sound. They're sound on offense. They are vulnerable defensively, but they're opportunistic defensively. This is going to be a tight game. It's going to be a battle royale, I believe, of offensive productions. Uh, but I like the Cowboys here getting three and a half points, even though it's on or two and a half points, and even half. though yep. it's on the road. So I like the Cowboys getting two and a half points, even though it's on the road, because I think they play, more importantly, their quarterback plays smarter. Pat Mahomes is a stud. Like He's one of the greatest players we've seen of this generation. But it's still got this little thing in his mind where he thinks he's a hero, man. And, and I don't love that. I, I love where Dallas is going. So give me Dallas plus two and a half. Well, we're just going to pour it on Rondé this week. Uh, I'm joining Tiki on this one, Rondé. Sorry, man. I, and trust me, I'm going back and forth. Again, you know, my gut feeling is saying Chiefs get it right. Everything you guys – everything you were saying, they, both offenses are clicking right now, but uh, – and, and I couldn't agree this more. This is going to be an offensive shootout, but I think the difference is going to be that Dallas's defense is is a little bit better right now. I, I'm just going to wisen up. I mean, I'm, I keep saying it every week underdogs are covering you go mm -hmm. with the money line so why wouldn't i take the points i'm gonna and the cowboys are covering 88 percent of the time i think they keep it close i think this is like you said last second field goal i'm going with the cowboys sorry ronda <laughs> I can y'all y'all will eat crow next week. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quickly, Kansas City is a minus one fifty to win the AFC West, and the Chargers right behind them at plus two hundred. Uh, I'm not bringing up my Broncos odds. That's just not uh, that's just not right right now. All right, it is time now for the Superbook Sports of Barber Brothers Games of the Week. Before you lock in your picks, make sure you keep on top of the latest lines at Superbook.com and download the app. All right, Tiki, uh, give us your game of the week, my man. My game of the week is the Green Bay Packers uh, laying two and a half, minus two and a half at the Minnesota Vikings. So the Vikings are an interesting team. They're sub 500, but they play every single game close. It's almost like, man, if you just made one more play or actually made a kick, you'd win these football games. And so I like them. I like their receiving core, Justin Jefferson, who was rookie of the year, and Adam Thielen, who's who's just a stud. He doesn't get the credit that he deserves. They, they both have multiple touchdowns, I think up around seven or nine, uh, respectively, between the two of them. Uh, but the difference in this, in this season 
season for the Minnesota Vikings is Dalvin Cook. And I'm not da knocking Dalvin Cook because he's had a good year, but he's only got three touchdowns. He's on pace to have the lowest total so far uh, in his exceptional career. 16 he had last year, 13 the year before. For whatever reason, he's not scoring. And because of that, I like what Green Bay can bring. They're going to outscore the Minnesota Vikings simply because Aaron Rodgers is more consistent. Now, I know they've lost Aaron Jones for a couple of weeks with that MCL sprain. But A.J. Dillon, who is just like My man. old school, three yards in a cloud of dust. But watch out now. I'm going to bust one here and there. Is a, is a is a great fill in uh, or a great he's in great position to take the load that now he's going to have to put on his back because age uh, Aaron Jones is out obviously Devontae Adams etc there but I I I like Green Bay even though they're on the road it's a division game uh, only laying two and a half I think they win this one pretty easily. That's a good call. I like that game too. I, I actually considered that game because there's not a ton of great games. This True, week, right? Yeah. The one I'm I'm choosing is Indy at Buffalo. And you'll understand here a second. Why? Because I, I like the quarterback matchup. You know, they have similar mm -hmm. stats, right? Look, go look at their stats. They have similar stats. One of them is an MVP candidate, and the other is five and five. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And he's only Carson Wentz, I'm talking about, is only about 20 points from being the leading one, uh, the leading team in the AFC. He's playing decent football right now. But talking about quarterbacks, we're really talking about running backs. I am in love with Jonathan Taylor. He is the Man. best running back in football right now. He has yep. the same number of yards as Derrick Henry. Finally caught him. Uh, and they are he is now 200 yards or 200 plus yards ahead of the next guy. Like He is easily the best running back playing a game right now. Going against the defense in Buffalo, that is the fourth most against the rush. So something's got to get. This is I'm, I'm so intrigued uh, by by this uh, by this uh, by this game. The rub here, though, and you 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 might disagree with me here, but the Colts have beaten no one substantive, right? Yes. And the point. Bills also need to prove that they can beat somebody substantive. They've they've got one good win, and it was against KC when they stuck. That's you go look true. at their schedule, and it's like they really haven't beaten anybody. Yeah. And they're a little like this, right? Mm. So the, the difference in this game, to me, is is the Buffalo D. Mike, they got two of the best safeties in the league, probably the best duo, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. Um, they, they lead the league in interceptions. However, Carson Wentz doesn't throw them. He's got one, one interception game, two two interception games, and it was against Tennessee. They they have the ability to show no mercy, and when Buffalo's offense is clicking, they're probably the most dominant one-two, you know, complementary football team in the league. However, I, I just don't I just don't see them covering seven points here. You know, they're just a little bit too unpredictable. I like the adjustments that they're going to make on offense. What does that mean, Sean McDermott? Adjustments to the to Buffalo's offense? To me, that tells me there's doubt there. Uh, I think this is going to be a close game because you know you're playing a team in 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 Indianapolis, they can control the clock. They have the best running game in the league, and the quarterback doesn't make mistakes. I'm feeling Indy here in the points, and maybe a little sneaky upset. Just say, oh, money line, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. So Tiki's game of the week. He's taking the Packers uh, currently at minus two and a half. And um, Rondé, you will take the seven points with Indy on the road at Buffalo. Both of those should be great games, guys, for sure. And uh, I, you know, you were talking about uh, Mahomes hooking you up in fantasy football last week. Well, AJ Dillon, that was the man mm -hmm. for me. Twenty-five yeah. oh, points, two man. touches, two touches. Yes, <laughs> yes. And whoever took him to score the first touch, I believe, according to SuperBook, it was a plus twelve hundred. So, congratulations. Oh, nice. Gotta love yeah. that. All right. And speaking of things you love, you know it. You love it, and it's back, back by <laughs> popular demand. There it is. It's Bucket O Bets, the original Bucket O Bets, by the way. <laughs> Three random wagers that the guys are either betting on or passing on. So let's uh, let's get to it here, and we will reach in. And our first bet, guys. Ah, MVP. Will mm -hmm. Rondé go against his uh, what he's been preaching all year about uh, Tom Brady winning the MVP? 
Patrick Mahomes, 15 to 1 to win the NFL MVP. Look at Rhonda. He's thinking about which way to go. Uh, we'll start yeah. with you, Rhonda. What do you think? I've, I still think this is Tom Brady's. Uh, however, this week, because he played like garbage, he, he <laughs> lost the, the, the passing lead to, um, uh, to uh, L.A., to uh, Matthew Stafford. He's still yeah. leading in touchdowns. And he still, to me, has the best opportunity to be the MVP. 15 to 1 now, man. I might, I might take that, dude. That's it's a long season. Yeah. A long season. And Mahomes, if he's able to play the way that he's playing, yeah, I, I'll take it. Right yeah. now, give me it. Tiki. I, I'm I'm going to say, yeah, I think I have to take it as well. Because I mean what? Josh <laughs> Allen. Josh Allen is the has the highest favorite, the the the, the tightest favorite right now. Yeah, the right best now. odds. Yeah, three to yep. one. Three to one. There's no value in that, and no. I don't even know if that's yeah. even worth it because I don't know if Josh Allen is playing consistently enough uh, to get it. But what we do know is that Pat Mahomes has the potential to have a 400 yard, five touchdown day almost any game, any depending day. on who you're, who they're Good playing, point. and especially once it starts getting close. Those are that's a great 15 to one are great odds. I would take that 100 out of 100. And even during the bad times with Kansas City, when they were playing bad, uh, poor football and losing, they were still scoring 20, 31 points a game. So, I, I, yeah, I take that one definitely. Yeah, that's called a value bet for yes. sure. No yep. doubt about it. And just looking at the uh odds here on superbook.com. Josh Allen, as we said, he has the best odds at three to one. Tom Brady, seven to two. Dak Prescott, right behind him, six and one. Kyler Murray, eight and one. Mm. Stafford, eight and one. And then Aaron Rodgers still hanging around at 12 to one. All right. I'll number two in our bucket O bets. Going in deep here and coming out with, oh, I like this one, guys. Already, the early odds, the NFC is the oh. favorite to win the Super hmm. Bowl. Are you laying two and a half points with the NFC, whoever it is? Tiki, we'll go to you first. Um, yeah, I think I would because it's it's going to be a team like either Green Bay or, or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who can go score points if they need to, especially if those teams are are healthy. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to think if there's a like a, a dud team that could make it and you'd kind of like start scratching your head. Uh, pro probably not. Um, the Cowboys, they're also, they're one of those teams. They would go score points. So I would take that bet, uh, laying two and a half for the NFC. The, consistently from the top end, the NFC has just been better than the AFC, really in totality, but especially at the top end. So I would definitely easily take the NFC laying two and a half in the Super Bowl. Okay, I'm Ron Day. Looking, I'm just looking here now at the uh, favorites who would be in the AFC, right? It's Buffalo. Yep, we already Correct. talked about on the show. A little inconsistent. Kansas City, right? You know, seven to one. Baltimore or anybody in the in the uh, in the north. North, yeah, yeah. Titans and, nine to one, and, and and Tennessee is your best team in the AFC right now, and they score and they and they've been winning games by putting up two hundred and twenty nine yards of total on average. Offense. On average, yeah. On average, that's come on. Th this take that bet. The NFC yeah. is by far the better conference this year. And I know we at the beginning of the year we said it was a little more skewed toward the AFC, and it was. Yes. But then the reality of having to play nine weeks of the season starts to reveal where the talent really is. The talent is in the NFC. The, the better teams are in the NFC right now. So, yes, two and a half, go for it. There you go. All right, as the guy said, the current odds, Bills 6-1, to one, Buccaneers 6-1. to one. Chiefs seven to one, Packers eight to one, Rams eight to one, Titans nine to one, and take a flyer on New England at sixteen to one. Mm -hmm. I mean, not ready, not it ready. Yeah, not ready. take no, it easy. Take but it. that is a value bet that might be worth a hundred bucks. <laughs> we, just, we, just said, we just said we're going to take the fifteen to one on, on, a, right. on a guy that's already won it. So <laughs> I mean, it's not like Bill Belichick hasn't already won it. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> All right, last uh, last bet here in the old bucket. Oh, bets, and we've got okay. We're going uh, NFC, AFC North. Pittsburgh mm. nine to two favorites to win 
the AFC North in a division, guys, that's wide open. Let me let me look at the this current standings. The Ravens leading the division six and three. Pittsburgh right behind them, five, three, and one. Cincinnati five and four, and Cleveland five and five. Are you going with the Steelers to win the North, Tiki? Um no, I just can't. I just don't love it, man. Big Ben feels compromised right now. You know, it feels like he's that guy who used to be just, uh, no, not even, I can't even make an analogy. I'll just call it like it is. He used to be amazing and he's great. Yeah. And now he's like hanging onto the ledge. Like yeah. I still, I can still, I can still do this, man. And they can't. Uh, that was, we mentioned the game against uh, last weekend uh, against Detroit Lions. It was gross, not just because of how bad Mason Rudolph played. He threw the ball 50 times. Why are you ma- letting Mason Rudolph throw the ball 50 times? Now, I know you can't run the ball consistently, but still, it was, it. I, that's more of who they are, even if Big Ben is at, is at the helm. So I'm saying no. I think, the, I think the Baltimore Ravens start to figure it out a little bit. I kind of want to re- agree with you, but for argument's sake, I'm going to say, take it for one reason because this division is a complete cluster right yeah baltimore is. losing last week just completely changed my opinion of how yeah. teams could beat them we know what cincinnati is i'm completely True. off them hold on let me finish my point i'm completely off cincinnati Cleveland doesn't have a quarterback and the, so it, it tells me that this division is going to be like this the entire year right the rest of the year and so these teams could end up with the same win amount and the team with the, with the, with the tie, right? <laughs> it's, it's valued more the than the tie. Loss. So, yeah. you know, Pittsburgh could end up like with the same win total and one less loss and they're in. So I'm taking it. I'm curious. What do you think your Bengals are going to do this week? I mean, mm-hmm. they, yeah. they get a week off, they come back. I mean, that was a team that was leading in the AFC at one point and then got blown out the last two. Do they come back, Rondé? They were they were so they, their quarterback was playing so well. Mm. And I, I did these guys in the preseason. I had their preseason game versus the Bucks. And Joe Burrow was like, he didn't play. He was embarrassing. Like, he was like, he was embarrassing in practice. He didn't play. I was like, this team's gonna stink. And then he proved me wrong. And now he's proving me right. all right i don't trust them (laughs) yeah i get it in current odds uh, according to superbook.com for the division baltimore is the favorite at minus 110 and then it's as you said it's a cluster it's uh cincinnati cleveland and uh pittsburgh all at nine to two all right guys that'll do it for bucket o bets um we are giving you, our viewers, and our listeners, the chance to hang out with the Barber Brothers in Las Vegas on Super Bowl weekend, February 12th and 13th. All you got to do is send us a question via Twitter for the guys. And if yours is picked, you are automatically entered into this drawing. The handle is at Superbook Sports, uh, at Ronde Barber, at Tiki Barber, and at our Cruck. It's just that simple. All right, guys, let's get right to it. Here is our question of the week coming in from Windy World via Twitter. And he asks, guys, I read the books you both co-authored. And I remember that you said you both went your separate ways in the NFL and that you both initially struggled but overcame it together. How much of that is true? All of it. Yeah, we uh, so we were roommates essentially for you know our entire 22, life. 22 years, yeah, 22 years, and then uh, we each went to um, you know, opposite New York. ends of the east coast. Yeah, Ronnie yeah. goes to Tampa, yeah. I go to New York, I and play so, right away, but then I get hurt. Ronnie doesn't play at all in his rookie season, it's like, dude, yeah. he's a bust. Uh, but it was like the, those cell phone bills. Back in the day when you actually had to pay for your cell phone bill. Yeah. Ronde turned his career. I turned mine. And we had this vicarious growth through one another. It's interesting you mentioned our books, though. Just real quick, Ronde. The reason we decided to do those is because Paula Wiseman 
who is an editor at Simon and Schuster, her son was a big fan of mine. And so she, she reached out like, ah, oh, you guys be interested. Rondé had just had his first daughter who's now at the university of Chicago. I had just had my first son who's now at Princeton university. And it was a great way for us to pass down these stories to our kids in the form of art and of a book. We ended oh, up doing wow. 12 of them, three picture books and nine chapter books. And I still get people coming up to me, parents coming up to me saying, my kids uh, are love to re learn to start reading because of your books. And in fact, Matt Rule, uh, who is the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, almost broke down and cried because his son has dyslexia and he wouldn't read. And one of the reasons that he started reading was because he saw mine and Rondé's books. And yeah, that's awesome. It, it changed it changed his trajectory uh, educationally. And so when I did the, the Panthers uh, Jets game in week one, Coach Rule gave me this big hug just to say thank you for writing a children's book. Mm -hmm. Right. The power of literature is is unbelievable. It so. really is. And, I, and to answer the viewer question and then Tiki, that's great. Uh, it's exactly how that happened. But to answer his question, we had a lot of shared adversity, right? And we mm. we were always successful. You know, it was very easy for us to be successful growing up. That's why the stories resonate because we always overcame little things, but we were always successful. The NFL was the first time where it was hard, you yeah. know? And because we were able to share our adversity and then ultimately share our successes, there was this belief, or at least in my mind, I'm sure Tiki agrees, there was this belief that we, we were always going to be successful. All we had to do was get through this adversity together, which right. we always done, and we did did it here, and here we are. Yeah, Close we got school. lucky, Ron. You know why? Because why? the books were actually about my mom. They were about us, but they were actually yeah. about why? Because why? the books were actually about my mom. They were about us, but they were actually yeah. about my mom. Who buys books? Moms. 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 100%. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh my gosh, you guys! That great insight. What a what an awesome question, and, and the history behind all those books is is phenomenal. Congratulations on that. That is that is cool to hear. And uh, Windy World, thank you for the question. That was that was one of our best this year. All right, guys, that's uh, gonna do it. We're gonna wrap up another episode of Betting with the Barbers. Only two teams on by this week: the LA Rams. They could probably use it, and <laughs> the Denver Broncos, which I guarantee could use Make it. it <laughs> yeah. Guys, any final thoughts before we let you go? Uh, I want to thank John Hoglin for running this show in the absence of Mike Rigg and. Yeah. I'm glad you read our books growing up, John. Yes. I know we were big influences on your now success. <laughs> I want to remind everybody, this is the most important and most special week of the NFL season. Why? Because I'm going to be at the Wicked Wolf at 120 Frank Sinatra <laughs> Drive on Monday night to watch the Buccaneers and the Giants, and I expect you to be there with me having some drinks. Go check it out. And if you Why can't be there with them... Watch the game with me. <laughs> there I you go. <laughs> and I can't wait for next week because there's a lot of bragging rights on the line in this one, guys. All right. Well, Tiki, um, enjoy the watch party. And Rondé, enjoy a being down in Tampa Bay and the uh, the um, ceremony for, for your teammate, John Lynch. That's pretty cool. Guys, great job as always. Uh, make sure that you sign up at Superbook.com. Download the Superbook app for the latest odds and follow Superbook on social media. We are at Superbook Sports. Betting with the Barbers airs on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And new episodes drop every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern and 3 Pacific. Tell your friends. Look for our picks and clips from the show throughout the weekend on social media. The podcast version of Betting with the Barbers is also available on Apple and Spotify. For Ronde and Tiki Barber, I'm Ron Kruk. Enjoy the games, and that is all.